Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. This is gonna be fun. We're gonna look at Trencher. I'm gonna do some updates and uh, this'll be a pretty awesome video. We're just gonna look at Trencher number one. I have to keep these videos a little bit tight. I'm very busy and uh, I wanna continue providing cool content for you and this has been highly, highly rec requested. I mean, seriously, Keith Giffen really jumped up in um, sort of just so many people asking me to do Keith Giffen and, and uh, I was having a lot of trouble finding my trencher comics in fact and um, I know I have them I have this and I also have infanticide that he did which was a Lobo series so a few interesting things about Keith, Keith Giffen and then I'm going to get into just sort of like some general um, housekeeping but uh, I didn't realize that he actually co-created Lobo I don't know how I didn't have that information in my head i may have at some point known it but uh when i was looking at infanticide last night in the credits it said you know lobo created by keith giffen and then it was one other person and uh, i was a little shocked to be honest so anyway but yeah we're gonna look at trencher today which is sort of like his creator own thing but then dan frega was actually telling me that not only did did giffen co-create lobo but when bisley was working on lobo at least on one of the series, uh, Keith actually did the layouts for him, which is actually pretty interesting. So it does make you kind of wonder how much Bisley got from someone like Giffen. I don't know the whole um, chronology of their work in terms of like what came out when, but uh, Bisley is an incredible artist on his own. So anyway, general housekeeping. I have lots of updates. So Blaster Kid, I have a, a top secret thing that I'm going to try to explain a little bit to people so that everyone understands what's going on. The plan for tomorrow, which I think is Kelsey and I are going to stream live um, and uh, do uh, the surprise each other with a comic book that we both think uh, the other might like and possibly ha hasn't seen. So, um, And the goal is to do something a little cleaner or tighter than some of the loose, rough stuff that we've been looking at. So... Um, Let's see, what should I start with? Okay, I'm going to start with this. Okay, so right before I did the colorist search for Blaster Kid, or literally a day or two into it, I got an email from uh, my, I call him the Iron Maiden guy, <laughs> but he was a person that I met at Comic-Con, and um, he worked for Iron Maiden, and in fact, he, he did a lot of stuff for Iron Maiden, and uh, he liked my work, and... It was one of those offers at Comic-Con that, that when you leave or after they leave the table and you've met them, you go, man, this is something that I actually really hope happens. But you meet so many people at comic book conventions that are just um, talking. <laughs> I hate to say it that way, but it's like they come up, they tell you all about themselves and they're very excited and they're very enthusiastic and they're like, you know, it's like you don't even really know if the conversation is them just telling you about themselves or what it is. And and my Iron Maiden guy wasn't like this, just to be clear, but, but uh, how these um, interactions end is they give you your, their business card and they say, hey, I'm working on this sci-fi novel and I've got this person in Hollywood who's interested in it and da 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 And um, they never contact you afterwards. You, I, One year after Comic-Con, I've talked about this before in one of my Journey of a Thousand Miles videos, but it was actually kind of funny. And I'll timestamp the video, so for people that want to uh, just start with Giffen and don't want to hear any of this stuff, um, you'll be able to hit the, um, just look in the description box, I'll have it, or I'll, I'll uh, pin it. Um, but, uh, yeah, one year just for the hell of it, because they these were always such um, dead-end uh, interactions. Uh, for fun, I took every business card that was given to me during Comic-Con, and I wrote everyone back one year and just said, hey, it was really nice to meet you. I'm never looking for work, to be clear. So these interactions with me... Generally, I'm not, I was, I, most of the time, if not all the time, I really never was, was actively seeking to, um, collaborate, uh, with, with other people. Um, so, you know, anyway, but the, the one year I decided that I would write everyone back and literally like, I, I probably wrote back, I'll, I'll just say 25 to 35 people. I think only one of them wrote back out of all that group where you went like, hey, it was nice to meet you. You gave me your card at Comic-Con. Um, you know, you're a sci-fi novelist that wants to get into comic books or you're a professional MMA fighter and you want to do a comic book or you're whatever, whatever the different scenarios. I've, I've seen many. Um, 
Uh, yeah, only one person wrote back, and it was it was funny enough someone that I kind of already knew. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, so when I when I met um, my friend who wor worked works for Iron Maiden worked he I don't think that he does anymore. I think he he um, he's switched positions. But uh, yeah, when he left the table, it was one of those times where I went, man, I really really hope that something comes of this. And man, I'll tell you what, either the Monday after Comic-Con or the Tuesday after Comic-Con, he wrote me an email. He wrote me an email. I didn't write him. He followed up on it and literally immediately lined up work for me. And those are the type of people that I like to work with. And so he wrote me right when I was starting the search for Blaster Kid and said, hey, I've got this opportunity and I know you want to get into penciling. He had no idea that I was about to launch Blaster Kid. He goes, and you, I think you one would be great for this. It'll give you an opportunity to finally draw some comic books that you, you get a pencil yourself. And um, I was really shocked at what the opportunity was. And so um, for people that are going, oh no, no, Rich, no, just stick with me for a second. This is all very, very good news. And, and, uh, um, anyway, so uh, normally when I get an offer like that, I, I will decide within probably a few hours if I'm going to do it or not. And it was one of those things where I was like, man, I literally, I think I was a day into looking for colors for Blaster Kids. So I had no idea what was going to happen with it. I still was trying to figure out all the crowdfunding things and all that. And uh, I just, I kept going like, should I do this or should I not do this? Should I take this or not? Everyone that I know outside of comic books that I told what it was was like, dude, you have to do this. If you don't do this, it's you're crazy. And I, I already knew that. <laughs> it's someone that I've been a fan of. Uh, it's a musician um, forever, like literally since I was a teenager. And um, the opportunity to collaborate with them on, on this project was just too, too good to pass up. And on top of it, they, they sent me the script a first draft of the script and it's a really really cool project to paint in super broad strokes if i was going to describe it to someone who's a comic book fan that that like i was like if you were a fan of the james robinson and alan moore wildcats issues you will like this comic book a lot i'm designing everything for the book every single character every element of it is 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 drawn by me is designed by me and it's really really cool and it's a fairly low commitment in terms of what i'm expected to do on it and so this is where it got complicated for me in terms of what was i going to do so as i was going into the blaster kid launch I still needed to work. I don't have enough money saved up where I can just go like, I'm not going to work for four months, but I'll do this crowdfunded book. And then when everything sort of settles down, I should make enough money to be able to cover all the expenses that the book is going to cost. I'll be able to have earned money that time and pay bills and do all that stuff. So I don't have any wiggle room going into stuff like this, but it's, it's, you know, I'm an inker in comic books. What do you expect? It's, it's, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not Greg Capullo, not, not to, like, that's an extreme example, but you know what I mean? It's like, like I, I'm not selling covers for $25,000 and sitting on tons and tons of, um, you know, s stuff that I can, I can generate cash from. So anyway, but, um, I, I had something lined up with DC comics, which was, I was supposed to be working on one Batman project, which in my mind was my final, final thing that I was ever going to do, um, inking so the batman thing just seemed to drag on and on and on and it was like we were supposed to do it a couple of months ago and then it turned into it was going to be a death metal project which was fine either or but i just i all i really needed was i needed two to three months worth of work to get me into the blaster kid um indiegogo campaign you know that that was really that that was going to be the um the gas in the tank that would get me there and so as it was dragging out, I, I was offered another death metal job over a really, really good penciler, in fact, and uh, I turned it down. So I had turned it down before this uh, heavy metal project. Heavy metal is the publisher of the thing that, that uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing with while I'm working on Blaster Kid. Um, but uh, yeah, and so um, I turned that down. That was probably three to four weeks worth of work, which would have actually really helped me because, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I need an income coming in. And then um, 
I just went like, all right, I, I already knew that I was going to need to take two to three months worth of work. And so when this heavy metal opportunity came my way, I just went like, do this because this is penciling. You're going to pencil and ink your own stuff. It's with someone that you completely admire. It also opens up a few doors for me that I can't talk about yet, but but uh, there's a few other opportunities that stack with this that are insane. Like, one of them is ridiculous that will be uh, unfolding over the next couple of years that I want to be a part of. And doing a project like this for them is going to definitely cinch me, is probably one of the top talent that they're going to bring in for this other thing. And it's crazy. It will be so fun, and people will go fucking ape shit for it but anyway but the nice thing is is 100 percent all i'm working on is penciling now this book the first one will be out before christmas so for people that that can't afford to spend 25 dollars on on a blaster kid tier you're going to be able to get a book from me within probably the next 12 weeks um that, that will cost whatever a normal heavy metal uh, comic book would cost. That You could probably get it digital. I don't even know. It's not like I don't handle that side of the business. But anyway, so I'm working on that right now. And I, I need to get five pages in. I've got one done. And I've laid out 13 pages of the project. Essentially what they want me to do is it's about seven to eight pages a month. So it's a, it's a very low commitment. Seven, eight pages a month that I'm, that I'm penciling and inking myself. And so what I'm trying to do right now, and I know this is a little journey of a thousand miles, but this is important stuff. Look, a, a big part of journey of a thousand miles is the strategy of being a professional artist. It's about being, uh, as we joke, like water. I, I've seen that popping up in a lot of Bruce Lee references um, lately. Bruce is always, I think, um, <laughs> relevant. But uh, yeah, and so it, it's like, like for me, I have to be really fluid with my decision making right now. But it, it, the, the, the exciting thing is, um, you know, it, it, I think it's really, really cool that within th three months, you know, but before Christmas, they want to have the first one out. You guys will already have a comic book penciled and inked by me that, that will be easy to get and will come fast. And what, what I actually think is very, very kind of cool and almost fortuitous in a way also is the fact that Kelsey, my colorist, is very, very busy right now. So it gives him an opportunity to get the things that he needs to get done, done. And I can stack up pages of Blaster Kid for him. So when he has free time and he wants to mix it up for a few days, he can hop on Blaster Kid and start coloring stuff. My goal right now is to create a schedule. And a lot of my Journey of a Thousand Miles videos is on the importance of a schedule. And again, it, it's like it comes back and it will hit you in the face every single time. Right now... What was, what was interesting is, so for the last 10 days, I really couldn't talk about it. And for the last, like, three weeks, I couldn't really talk about it. But the last 10 days in particular, because it's, like, it hasn't been announced. I don't think it will be announced for, for a while. But um, uh, I couldn't explain what I was working on, and I can't show it. <laughs> yet patreon will get will start to get bits and pieces of it when they release the um the five page and this is what's great too is i actually gonna do the cover for this thing dude i've okay like i've worked for dc forever forever about five years ago cover work completely vanished for me i went from with david finch we were doing three covers a month to um we were doing dark knight covers we were doing um uh, Birds of Prey covers and Green Lantern covers. I think it was Green Lantern. Green Green Arrow? Green Green Lantern. I can't even remember. I think it was Green Lantern. Yeah, I think we were doing Green Lantern, Birds of Prey, and Batman Dark Knight. And we were doing the Batman Dark Knight book. So we were doing 20 pages of interiors plus three covers a month. So I went from that to, in I think three to four years, I did five covers for DC. They completely pulled that away from me. And it was either I was working with pencilers that that weren't getting the covers which is really i think um I, I i'm not a fan of that i think if you're going to do a variant cover one should be the interior artist and one should be the variant cover artist i don't think that 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 there's many circumstances where the person that does the interior of the book shouldn't do the cover but the great thing is is they're training me on this heavy metal gig like i'm a legitimate talent they're respecting my ability and they're like i honestly hadn't i didn't have the nerve to ask if i was going to get to do the cover and then yesterday in um, a few emails when we were going over the layouts that i had submitted um 
it was like we'll need a cover um, in the next you know month or so. So you know we'll start kind of kicking around ideas for that. And uh, I was like, wow, they're actually going to let me do the cover. I mean, it, it's like jobs like that and per, um, what would you call it? Personal relationships that are business relationships that are that um, functional are very, very appealing to me, you know? So um, anyway, but yeah, so back to schedule. So what I'm trying to do right now and what was what was very time consuming is for the last like two to three weeks, I've been designing everything for the book. So it was, it's a great experience um, because it was, you know, things that I wasn't prepared to design where we're like, we'll just use as a simple example. If you were designing the James Robinson Wildcats or the Alan Moore Wildcats, um, how, you know, and, and the Wildcats didn't exist. So you're, you're literally, you're, you have to design a full team of characters. You have to design, it was like, I basically had to design two big things a bunch of uh non-human things <laughs> and then a bunch of like normies <laughs> it was a lot of shit to it was it was actually a little scary and stressful and there were definitely times where i wanted to hit the eject button i was like i don't know i'm i was so in the bat the blaster kid headspace that all of a sudden to have to do something different really kind of freaked me out but um i had mentioned to ryan Wynn that that um as they want me to do a podcast and i'm just like i'm too busy right now i'm trying to get out there and promote more but um i just i have to be really really careful of my time and uh the thing is is what what it's it's hard to explain is patreon is very very time consuming for me just to do the reviews and lesson tiers is hours and hours of work each month. I mean, it's like it's almost a full time job doing that, and then and and um, you know then doing videos for Patreon, and then doing YouTube. It's a lot to do. But anyway, so what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to actually work out a new schedule where what I'm thinking is once I start actually just only having to not not design anymore and pencil and ink pages, if I can really get my workflow going efficiently for the heavy metal job, where it's like. I can go, okay, from 11 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock in the afternoon. I'll spend seven hours working on that, eat dinner, um, you know, and then work on Blaster Kid for, for three or four hours at night and, and just try to get Kelsey um, one or two things each week. And then, so what Kelsey and I had already talked about before all this was we wanted to get new images up um, to get everybody super pumped for it. So... As his schedule starts to break up, I'll already have pieces for him. But in terms of the schedule for when I was going to release Blaster Kid, as far as I can tell, nothing has changed. So so that's a plus, too, for people that are worried and going, like, this is going to postpone things. It really isn't. So anyway, um, because uh, it's a, it's such a low commitment for me. Seven or eight pages a month is not that bad. Designing it was bad just because it was like three weeks with no pay and a lot of work. Um, and laying out pages, you know, it, it, it gets some of the work done, but you know, I've been doing layouts for, um, a while now. And, um, you know, I'm trying to think of how many panels I've laid out. I would say I've laid out close to a hundred panels. It's flat. It flexes a lot of muscles for you. And especially when you haven't written the script. Um, and, uh, I had mentioned to Ryan when, um, that uh, I actually kind of like that because it's it's beating me up and it's pulling me out of my comfort zone. But what it's doing is it's making me really have to address uh, my ability right now where it's like, you know, if you're working in a comfort zone, um, you know, you uh, you don't have to draw the one thing that you don't want to draw or you might have to do a series of things that you go, fuck, man, this is actually, this takes a lot of brain energy. So anyway, that's what I'm up to and uh, that's as much as I can say right now. But yeah, like I said, you're going to get a comic book from me in about 12 weeks, which I think should be exciting for people because I think overall what it is is people want to see me drawing shit and the fact that I got to design everything for this book and draw it and like I said... It's cool. If you're a fan of the James Robinson and Alan Moore Wildcat stuff, I think you'll like this. It isn't a team superhero book, but painting in very, very broad strokes. If you enjoyed those comics, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't like this. So that's good. And then 
I, I was able to pass on two inking jobs that, that uh, would have really put me in, a, in um, I think, a worse spot. Because here's the deal. Like, if, if you go, oh, man, I wish you wouldn't have done this. The, the, the only other option I had was that I would have done the death metal job. I would have been inking the death metal job, and I have no control over how long it is. If they say, hey, this was this is what it is. is it's, it's six issues, um, and they're 18 pages over the next um, six months. Then I'm locked into that. I have no control over my schedule. I can't control the workflow at all. It, it's completely out of my hands. With this... I don't have to wait for anyone. The full script for this book is done. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like I get up and I'm I'm completely in control of everything that's going on. And, and I love that. I love that part of being a penciler. And then obviously on Blaster Kid, writing it and penciling it and inking it is even better. So anyway, all right, let's get to Trencher. I apologize for the long intro, but... Uh, I think that people enjoy getting the background story and, and sometimes when it rains, it pours. And I actually had said that in, in a video recently where it never fails that the moment you go to do something, it's like the universe just goes, well, here, like you're doing so well, let me reward you with more stuff. <laughs> and you're like, really? Now you're going to do this? You, I, I wish that this would have happened like a year ago, but it didn't. But I'm telling you, for, for people that are music fans, when you hear who I'm working with, you will be very, very excited about it. And um, for people that don't give a shit about music, then you've got a very cool, um, we'll call it like sci-fi comic book that I'll be working on. And Blaster Kid really isn't isn't uh, as sci-fi, you know, so um, it'll be cool. You're going to get the best of both worlds. Sorry, let's look at Trencher. Highly, highly requested. Keith Giffen, Image Comics. This is one of the OG uh, Image books. Not OG as in core books, but uh, this came out like early, early on. And they're they're really fun books. It was so different than anything else that um, was really coming out through Image. And uh, let's go into full screen mode and get our get our trencher on. <laughs> So I apologize for the long intro, but uh, I wanted to be honest with everyone. You know, it's actually exciting news. The timing is a little weird, but uh, past that, I know all of you wanted me penciling. So that's that's what it really comes down to. And variety is sort of a, a fun thing with that, too. Who knows? Some people may like that better than Blaster Kid, as crazy as that sounds. You never, ever know. <laughs> so anyway... This guy was not afraid to draw smoke, bullets, uh, hinges, uh, anything. If there was space, he filled it with more things. <laughs> One line wasn't enough. Why not draw two lines around everything? It's funny because, you know, in, in some ways, Kenneth Roquefort draws a little bit like this. Kenneth's stuff is very, very detailed and, and encrypted to some extent. And uh, he's always had a very wild color palette. If you've ever seen him color himself, it actually, it does have a little bit of the spirit to it. So, Kenneth, if you ever see this video, what's up? I love your work. I'm a big fan. And, uh, yeah, he's good just seeing if there's any it's always kind of fun to see the names in the book and uh so big help digital chameleon so there we go. 1993 that is the olden days oh look at that stoplight it's so cool <laughs> clud and this looks like it was actually scanned off of the original printed comic book which is cool um, but we're getting some of the printing dots on it, which is a little unfortunate. With your normal human eye, you wouldn't see this as much. So, man, it's cool. This took me forever to find online. Um, you know, I I always encourage people to buy books, and in fact, I know that people do. It, it it's like you'll see. I mean, I use digital files just because it's a little bit easier for the video, and we can really zoom in on this stuff. But uh, you know. I look at it like this, and, and it, it's it's people are going on eBay and they're buying these comic books. They're going online and they're buying them from online comic book stores. They're they're 
comics are moving around because of these videos. There's just no two ways about it. People are picking this stuff up. If you're a comic book store and you're struggling and people are coming in and buying back issues and flipping them online, that's a good thing, you know? It's not, I don't think anyone prefers seeing digital copies of books. Um, you know, I, I mean, I think that there's a convenience to it, but, but in general, for me, if I ever find a, a really, really good comic um, with a digital file, I go out and I buy it. You know, I want I want to own it. I like to have like like my comic book collection is a collection of tangible things, but the convenience of digital just to like you know poke through something is nice. I actually really like on my iPad being able to zoom in um, on stuff too. I mean, there that is very very cool where you know you can stretch the screen out and and really kind of pull in on things so that is a nice thing in fact the book that i've selected for kelsey tomorrow is really really detailed and the person drew very very small at times that could actually be a clue for people it's a cartoony style it's very detailed and the person drew incredibly small <laughs> Take a guess in the comment section. I like how he draws water with the bubbles. The lettering on this stuff is actually very, very cool. I don't know if Keith did all the lettering. It, I, I would say that the the the, the like the, this is probably not him, but it looks like all the other stuff is him, and like I think even this, maybe, maybe, maybe could have been in the art itself. Man, that is such a great page. Just for fun, let's see something here really quick. We'll try to make it as grayscale as possible. It kind of worked. It took out a little bit of his smoke, which is a knockout. Um, let me see if I can. It's closer. But yeah, I think if you saw this stuff in black and white, it would actually look very, very cool. But he doesn't spot any black, really. Meaning um, black areas on the art. That's interesting. Life sucks and then you come back. Is that true? Oh yeah. Look what we got. We got this thing. I don't even really know what those are called. I call it bullet belt, but I don't think that that is the right term. It was funny as getting ready to do this video, I was like, man, this is such a piece of cake now compared to like streaming. And it's not like streaming is hard, but um, like just doing a video where I open it up and, and uh, <laughs> talk about it and don't have to go to StreamYard and, and uh, all that. It, it's like these are like these are so chill now. Yeah, this is really interesting stuff. The guy's so good. Wow. Damn, that's such a cool drawing. So Dan Frega was saying that Rob Liefeld, like Blood Wolf, was heavily influenced by this. And Lobo, too, I mean, obviously. Um, but uh, Blood, Blood Wolf actually was a very, very cool and kind of exciting character. Um, I, I liked it and wish that he would have done more. Um, because it was like, it, there wasn't a ton of it. I need to really go through my collection. In fact, I actually have to go out there today and look for some stuff, but I probably won't find any of these image books. But I need to organize my shit and really just kind of lock in my collection, and then I'm going to get rid of everything that I don't really want. What happened for me is my collection is big. It used to be way bigger. I used to probably have twice as many books, which is saying a lot, because I have a shit ton. But, uh... Um, I would buy collections off people. I've mentioned it a few times before, but like I had a friend who I met in college and he, you know, as he saw me get into comics and he was getting, you know, a little older, he was like, I don't really want these anymore. Do you want to buy them off me? And so I bought, I don't know, even know how many long boxes off of him, 12 to 16 maybe. So I bought that. I had bought another collection off another person about a year ago. I bought a collection off another person. And so you end up with a ton of shit and, and it's like, 
sometimes you buy the collection really more as an invest an investment, meaning that like there's some books in there that you're like, oh, that would be actually really cool to own or, or these, these, you know, 50 comics I want, but maybe you bought five long boxes of other stuff that you're like, oh man, what am I going to do with all this? So I'm going to sell it. The, the collection that I bought recently was really interesting. I love the band-aids on him. Um, it was a friend of mine's dad and, uh, he he was really into number one issues and so a lot of what he would buy was either number one issues or first appearances but then he had a ton of like 80s comics too which was kind of weird but uh yeah it's it's it wasn't in the greatest condition but there were so many interesting first appearances and and things like that that i knew i would make my money back on it a few times over so I, I paid him a very generous amount for the the collection but there was still wiggle room to like actually like you know do the work and separate it and part it out and uh so i need to get rid of all that stuff though it'll be fun i'll do some of it i'll do some of it on youtube because the thing is is everyone's into different shit you know i guarantee that there's someone out there that will go you have 15 issues of that man i would love to get those send them my way rich He moves the camera around pretty well. It's interesting because, uh, like, let's see, how many panels is this page? One, two, three, four, five, six. I think six. Oh, this is a great shot, in fact, right here. I love this. We're, like, down a couple of stairs, and we get to see in the hallway and stuff like that. I like four to six panels per page, and I think that there are times when more panels are cool, but it should be used sparingly. But, uh... It was interesting when I when I gave my well here's a funny example this is like the Watchman style panel layout but he, his doesn't feel like it the the um, way that he did it but this is a nice use of a nine panel page but yeah my uh, friend who read the script he goes watch your panel count on the pages he goes because that was one of the mistakes that I made on my first book was uh, it was a little too dense and uh, I was like okay that's a good good point. You know, it'll be interesting going back and, and rereading it all, um, you know, with that in mind, too. So many firsts. It's, man, crowdfunding books right now is just so fun and it's so exciting. And I laugh and I'm happy and uh, it feels so different than it did a few months ago. <laughs> it's like anxiety and stress and just like frustration was like everywhere i'm telling you the biggest hold up for me for a crowdfunding book was literally just fulfillment i could never remember the damn name i would always be like what is the word called fulfillment be like getting shit into people's hands i did i just ship art just recently and if you guys are watching the video it is on the way i did ship it tomorrow morning i'll send tracking for everyone um today um but uh yeah i shipped four things it took two hours to pack up all the art it was original art it's a little more time consuming um, because you have to really make sure that it's secure and stuff like that but uh yeah it was a lot of work i had to cut up boards and stuff like that i'm gonna there's a company that sells short and long boxes something dw i think um they actually sell pre-made uh comic original art shippers i'm gonna buy some of those so that i don't have to uh cut cardboard to, to size i always joke when i ship out art that my art has a more exciting life than me because it goes like all over the world like one of them was going to ireland and i was like man i want to go to ireland this piece of art is going to be in ireland in like two or three days i'm going to be sitting in my house doing the same thing that I do every day. What is that he wrote? Give it a rest, would you? And right here it says, give it a rest. Isn't that weird? Like, why is the... Like, that stayed on the board. Do you see that right there? Isn't that funny? Give it a rest, would you? And then right here it says, give it a rest underneath it. That's bizarre. I didn't notice that in any other parts of the book. I wonder if that's Keith's handwriting and he wrote it as like word balloon placement. That's the other thing too with a dense style of art like this. It's like you actually do 
need to be mindful of word balloons and how much of your art it's going to cover. You got to leave gaps. Gaps for the word balloons. Muy importante. <laughs> She's so awesome. What is that? I can't even tell what this is. Oh, it's a door. Oh, and it's his foot. Okay, okay. This is the door being completely discombobulated. Look how crooked the um, cabinets are in her kitchen. That's funny. He's having fun, man. This makes me want to do a comic in this style at some point. Die three... Eve? Diaz? Oh, maybe he's numbering the pages. Hmm. Chris Bacala would actually handwrite page numbers on the bottom of pages sometimes. I don't remember if it showed up in the book or not. That's funny background. He's doing some wacky shit on this. Oh, there's Die Hard. This is so funny. Man, this is cool. I love the straps on his boots. They're kind of steampunky. I'm trying to figure out. I guess that's his hair. I was like, is that like an earring? Man. I'm doing a hand lesson today for Patreon. So if you're on Patreon and you're watching this, get ready to learn a couple of things about hands today that I think will really actually help people. I have a German uh, anatomy kind of figure drawing book that I got... Um, about 10 years ago. It's really, really good. I don't see too many people discuss it. And uh, I'm going to take some of the hand um, way that they break down hands in it. And I'll show you guys uh, some things that might help people draw better hands. You can always improve your hands. You can always improve your faces. You can always improve everything. But hands and faces are big. Those are important. Yeah, this is cool stuff, man. This has a little bit of like a Bacalo steampunk vibe. Chris did steampunk quite a bit after this, but some of this, it's just coincidental, but it's fun. Well, I hope that this was enjoyable for everyone. And again, I, I sort of partially apologize for the long intro. Please do, though, if you can... Um, and you should sign up for the Blaster Kid pre-launch because one, you're going to get an extra perk when you get your comics. Um, and uh, also, um, we'll be updating it soon. I'm Like I said, I'm being very respectful of Kelsey's time. Uh, he's he's He is really, really busy right now. And uh, it worked out good. Like I said, it gives him time to get that shit done and then I can get a, a good footing on um, this thing that I'm working on. And then uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to give him new blaster kid art every week and that stuff i will be able to show as i'm doing the blaster kid promo pieces for kelsey i'll i'll show that stuff um and uh you'll get to see it in black and white and color and then um that'll give people entertaining stuff and then you'll start to see the um the other thing that i'm working on should be like they'll they'll definitely start to tease it within a few weeks so a lot of art is coming you know i'm i'm literally drawing hours and hours every day tons of shit is getting produced so i'll be able to show all of it uh, as things move along so good shit is coming well it's really interesting how he draws his anatomy i these shapes are actually very very cool i'm trying to fit oh those are noses around his neck man that's brutal he does really cool uh like layered straps there's a lot that you can take from this and I'm a fan of this stuff. I like, um, I had mentioned that uh, I really like the the Punisher Armory books. And then I've always been a fan of source books. So, man, I have so many fun ideas for Blaster Kid. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. It, like, look, there's a part of me that wishes that I didn't have to work on this other thing. I'm not going to lie. But I'm very, very excited to be doing it. And it really is actually an honor to be working with this group of people that I'm going to be collaborating with. And then, like I mentioned, it opens up a lot of doors for me that uh, are things that people will really be even... I think even more excited about. So there's a lot of good shit coming. 
A lot of good stuff. And I'm proud of all my, my peeps, Patreon, everybody that's going out there and going for it right now. I have a lot of respect for everyone. I really do. There's every, there's so many people going for it. And I think it's really inspiring and exciting. So stick to it. And uh, great things will come from it. That is for sure. So, all right. I think we're at the end of this. Yeah. Let's do... A little tiny bit more. I'm gonna go. I open trencher too. We'll we'll look at like uh, to here. Just so everyone gets their trencher fix. All right, let's go in full screen mode. Full screen. I actually have Shadowhawk open too, but the files are super super dark. That's a great face right there. Um. Yeah, he did Tales of the Shadowhawk. I think it's two comics. Um, it's cool. So that's another one you can look out for. And I do own that. I don't know where any of that stuff is. It's weird. All my earliest image stuff all is like together. But it's it's like one of those boxes that's like put away. Because I was like, oh, I don't really need to look at this stuff. This was like years ago. But then all of a sudden, now it becomes where like I'm like, man, I really kind of want to see that stuff. But it's just it's probably the like the box that's in the corner behind all the other boxes. <laughs> it's like, shit, <laughs> want to get to that, see them. Sometimes in your collection, you just go like if you've ever thinned out the herd, you go like there's no way that I got rid of that. Like there's no way that I got rid of these trencher comics. I know just my personality and I would go like. They're unique. They're, there's not a lot that I own that's like them. So that would be a, a just cause to keep them. Where other stuff sometimes, you know, you'll go, uh, you know, I do like the cover on this, but the interiors, it's like I've got other stuff that I think is is similar to this or even better than this. So I don't need to keep this. And you, you'll let that stuff go. This is a really, really nice explosion. It's funny because it doesn't look like the uh, Akira explosions, but man, the explosions in Akira are so freaking good. This is nice too. It's really fun art. It's very exciting looking. I have no idea what hotcomic.net is. I'm assuming that that was the, either the original place that these files originated. But uh, yeah, I, I've never gone to that site, so I don't know even if it exists. The lettering is so funny. It 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 hasn't aged well, but I don't remember. I don't remember Wildstorm comics having lettering. I, I hate to say this bad, but this is not good lettering. I don't think it just doesn't. It doesn't. It just looks like type font. You know, like someone just went like, "I've got a typewriter. I could type it in." <laughs> I don't know. This is a little better. I mean, this is fine. His his hand lettering, like the sound effects, is cool, but this looks very weird to me. This is a little better. It seems to fit the... I, I, I don't normally notice lettering. So if I notice it, it's either exceptional or it doesn't work. It was funny is I actually worked on a book that people really, really either loved the lettering or hated it, and that was Steampunk. Um, boy, I'll tell you what, I had never seen more people complain about the fonts that were used because different characters had different fonts, and if they would enunciate words or if there was like a lot of emphasis on things, they would change the font even more. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, people didn't like it. I was too close to the project to really probably be too uh, subjective on it. But, uh, yeah, that was funny. Is I, I had never really seen anyone complain about the lettering in a comic as much as on Steampunk. So, you live and you learn. And you learn and you live. I like his pipes. <laughs> this grandma's funny. You cheeky little monkey. And then she says gurgle. Blund. Yeah, this is another one where the lettering, I don't know, like this and this, it just looks too, too normal for this book. And he is like, it's interesting. I wonder if Bacalo got that from, from, from Giffen. It wouldn't surprise me, but yeah, on Steampunk, he did this, something similar, you know, he would always throw it somewhere on the pages. He didn't do it for all the issues though. 
Granny Splash. And she's got that funny hair that I always equate to Bisley. Now it makes me curious. If someone knows sort of the, the chronology of, of Giffen to Bisley, who who kind of was working in this sort of style first? Do you know? If you know, let me know. I'd be curious of what the sort of the rollout was on that. And then is there someone that they kind of are vibing off of that sort of had this um, maybe in the the 70s, you know? I'm going to assume that this is sort of an 80s evolved style. Um, but uh, I don't know. Okay, all right. I'm going to end it there. Have a great day. I got to get to work. I'm actually, I'm going to work for about 90 minutes and then I'm going to do that Patreon video and then just keep working. I've got to actually pencil pages now. I, my goal was to... The, the comics that I'm working on are uh, 25 pages. So um, I have 13 pages laid out. One page, page one is done. That was what got me hired for the job. I did one sample page and the person loved it. It's their project. Um, and then, um, yeah, so today I'm working on pages two and three. And I'm just going to muscle muscle through it and get those first five done. And then um, then I'm going to pull Blaster Kid into the rotation, which would probably be today's Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Probably Monday of next week, I'll be on Blaster Kid every day. Um, splitting my time between the two projects. So, um, but the heavy lifting is done for both books, which was designing most of the stuff. I, I it just you never feel like you're done designing things. But overall, I I know what I'm at least going for with this other book. That was hard, man. Imagine not even expecting like like I'd never get calls where someone goes, Rich, do you want to pencil something? So that's why I took it into my own hands. <laughs> <laughs> that's where blaster kid comes from but when it when it when it did and then it was like oh shit like that's awesome this is a really neat opportunity but it's like then you go fuck man that like none of this stuff has ever been drawn before it's a great opportunity but it, it's it's like you go geez every single character every person every building every vehicle every costume is me whoo <laughs> Let that sink in. So, all right. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. I will. And uh, I'm looking forward to whoever's streaming today. I've been having a lot of fun watching everyone live stream. So uh, bring it on, people. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.